Over on Jekyll Island in the campground is a feeding station that was set up by a camper several years ago. She found a spot in the campground that had lots of birds. So she set up a single feeder and she put up a, a mailbox. And in the mailbox was a little book that people were to write down what they saw at the feeder. And so one time I was there, I opened the mailbox, looked at the little book, and it was written by some of several school kids that had been there. And the young uh, the person said that they particularly enjoyed seeing the rainbow bird, and which was referring to the painted bunting. So. The male painted bunting is described as the most colorful songbird in North America. Uh, the male has a, a bright blue head, it has an orange eye ring, a green back, and a red front, and it's kind of a mango red on the chest. And um, just below the nape of the neck, there's a highlighter yellow color. Um, so it's a really pretty bird, you know, when they're in their breeding plumage. So in the U.S., um, we have uh, different species of birds that have different patterns of uh, residency. And some uh, bird species, such as like cardinals and mockingbirds, are permanent residents. And then some species are called neotropical migrants. And um, the pain of bunting is what's called a neotropical migrant. So they uh, spend their non-breeding season, which is the fall and the winter, they spend that in uh, Florida and in the Caribbean. And then they come up to northern Florida, Georgia coast, and uh, South Carolina coast, North Carolina coast. And then sometimes there you'll find them up the river, like the Altamaha River or the Savannah River, because Augusta has a, a breeding population, so up the Savannah River. So this is um, a good example of a painted bunting nest because it has four eggs in this clutch. And so this is typically what the painted bunting egg looks like. They're a little smaller than an inch long. Um, they're typically this white color with tan or chestnut speckles all over the egg. They like to nest in um, shrubby habitat, um, typically near grassy areas or um, semi-open forest. Um, here on the east coast, they stay near the marshes. They'll also use uh, old shrubby fields. They'll use backyards too. Um, but typically you'll find them up and down the coast and uh, on the edge of habitats between the maritime forest, which is coastal forest, and then they'll also uh, stay close to the marsh. So they stay in the shrubby areas kind of between those two habitats. There's a, a, a survey that many states go through called the breeding bird survey. They go out and they record all the birds that are reproducing, breeding. They have different evidence whether they're carrying food or the building nests, whatever, anyway. And th they have recorded a decline of the painted bunting in our area. About 75% of them have been lost. Habitat loss is the number one thing. If you looked at the range of the painted bunting in the east, it's along our coast. Where's the most highest in increase in population growth? It's along the coast. And then not only that, but then they winter in places like the Bahamas, which has gone through a lot of changes in, in habitat, and Cuba, which has gone through a lot of change, and South Florida. Well, South Florida is nothing like it used to be. So habitat has greatly, where they spend their time getting food has greatly reduced. And with birds that have such specific um, habitat areas that they'll use to breed in, it's a lot easier for them to um, experience pressure from outside sources because in coastal areas, you know, development um, is a, a big source of pressure on the pain of bunting because not only do the males have to compete with each other for breeding areas, now they have to compete with um, housing areas, with um, you know, urban development, urban sprawl in the coastal areas. In addition to that, feral cats um, kill millions of birds in the United States every year and these birds feed a lot on the ground, so they're vulnerable to feral cats. Uh, and another thing is brood parasitism. Cowbirds, the brown-headed cowbird, will lay its eggs in other birds' nests. And then when that, that egg hatches first, it pushes out all the other babies or, uh, or eggs. So the painted bunting literally raises a brown-headed cowbird.
uh, especially in the 1800s, the painted bunting was a popular caged bird, and it's still caught and sold now as a caged bird, but it was um, especially popular during the 1800s. And um, John James Audubon actually uh, made a note of this, that they were caught in large numbers in Louisiana and shipped to Europe, where they fetched 100 times the price there that they would here as caged birds. So there was a, a big pressure on them even back in the 1800s. Um, and n nowadays, uh, they're still caught and sold um, as caged birds, but that's typically down in Mexico and in the Caribbean that they're caught and sold. I think that when any of our native organisms are threatened, it means that we're losing part of our habitat and our, our environment is changing drastically and we need to pay attention to it. We, we may not be able to save all the species that are threatened and endangered, but we need to take note because there are things that we depend upon. These habitats are important to us for many different reasons. And if you see one bird declining, that means that there's something wrong. It could be pesticides, it could be habitat loss, it could be lots of different things, but it's, they're, they're warning signs that there's something wrong with the environment and that we should always pay attention to that. It certainly is one of the favorite birds for people who come to, to Georgia. Uh, I can't tell you how many people who come here and they're maybe just uh, casual bird watchers, but they want to see a male painted bunting. That is high on their list. So it's kind of like a, a tourist attraction in a way. If they spend extra time here. They'll go, they'll go over to Jekyll Island and sit and watch a bird feeder just so they can see a painted bunting. So yeah, it's a, it may, it, maybe you can't translate it into dollars and cents, but it probably is a factor. So I think that's one thing, it's a tourist attraction.